Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Monday, June 24th, 2024. It is the day of the moon. We have a waning gibbous moon. We are in cancer season, the Celtic tree month of oak, woodpecker season, and we are going through Pluto retrograde. The sun remains in Cancer, cardinal water, representing intuition. The moon is third quarter Aquarius, fixed air, representing stubbornness. Mercury is in Cancer, cardinal water, representing hominess. Venus is in Cancer, cardinal water, representing frugality. Mars is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing renovation. Jupiter is in Gemini, mutable air, representing questing. Saturn is in Pisces, mutable water, representing nostalgia. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing renovation. Neptune is in Pisces, mutable water, representing imagination. And Pluto is retrograding in Aquarius, fixed air, meaning that we need to examine our intentions and remember the mantra of reflect, heal, and evolve. So for the waning gibbous moon, we cleanse, banish, and reflect. And for the Aquarian moon, we do socialize, we do group projects, and we do look for new horizons. We don't get into our personal issues. We do not get lost in idealism. And we don't deal with people who have predictable minds if we can help it. Now, you might be encountering some of those at work today. So again, just try to create a little bit of, a, of, a, of an insulation between yourself and those people because they might get on your nerves a little bit more today than they do other days. So the Aquarian moon and the Cancerian sun uh, may feel actually at cross purposes today. Uh, the sun is in this very emotional place. It also is desiring to stay closer to home and what is familiar. And the moon has the exact opposite energy. Uh, so if your composure is feeling threatened today, just try to take a few deep breaths, meditate if you can, um, and just kind of sort your way through. Um, you might find a way to reconcile these energies in some fashion. Uh, but if you can't, just again, deep breaths, meditate the moon will be moving on in due course. Now for our tarot of today, we have the eight of mirrors and its keyword is selfless. And we can see that uh, the figure in the card, he is walking away from all of these mirrors on the path. All of these mirrors are behind him. He's not looking back. He's not getting caught up in his own personal sense of vanity. He has a job to do and he's a lot more focused on what he needs to do rather than looking at his face. Uh, then, uh, you know, the age of social media, it has really created people who are obsessed with their own image. Uh, it's just, it's, it's very odd. It's very strange. Uh, the degree to which uh, this kind of narcissism has just spontaneously developed. I can't think of a time in ages where we did not have this technology where that would have been nearly as common. Uh, just, it just wouldn't have arisen. There wouldn't be any need to be constantly looking at yourself. Um, so I think it behooves us to be mindful. You know, are we too centered on what's going on with ourselves? Do we still have the ability to look beyond our own nose? And are we considering about, you know, more important weightier matters in life? Or are we, are we not? Uh, you know, and hopefully the answer isn't anything that's too uh, rough on us. But if it is, then, you know, this would be the sign to uh, make some appropriate adjustments and uh, look a bit beyond yourself today. Today's Celtic triad reads, there are three things which mislead the world, the promises of masters, the garments of priests, and the seemliness of a daughter. So uh, masters, priests, and uh, daughters, uh, these are people who are empowered to varying degrees. Uh, you know, and when it comes to daughters, I mean, I'm sure you've seen fathers who were just wrapped around their daughter's baby finger, and that pretty much happened from birth onward. Uh, so that is uh, certainly power. And uh, the trouble is, is that whenever people are in power, they have the habit of saying and doing whatever they think they need to stay in power to maintain that kind of influence. And, um, and that's particularly true of people who are, you know, the masters of the world, people uh, who are in positions of authority, whether it's in business or politics or anything else. Uh, they're just, they are doing what they think they need to do in order to maintain their status quo or to even expand their power, expand their financial resources and expand their influence. And then with the priests, uh, the appearance of holiness is not the same thing as the actuality of holiness. And how many people over the centuries have learned that uh, very much to their detriment. It's not an easy lesson to, to learn and it's very dis disillusioning. And uh, I think of faith quite a scene that people who ought to be teachers in their faith, who ought to be, you know, guides, who ought to be, you know, helping other people spiritually, uh, their personal shortcomings, or honestly, sometimes their outright betrayals of the faith they purport to have, uh, that really does a number on people. And it, what, what's the worst thing is that it's, it can be difficult, especially if it's mishandled. Uh, let's say the priest is guilty of some kind of wrongdoing and their religious community doesn't really do anything to redress the issue. 
uh, that can destroy people. It, it, it leads them to think that, oh, you know, this isn't just the failings of one person. It's like, oh, this institution I'm a part of, there's something really, really wicked and wrong about this. And it can even uh, disconnect them from the gods saying, you know, I believe this wholeheartedly, but look at what the people who are in the lead who are doing with it. Uh, it's it's a terrible thing. And of course, you know, anyone who, who acts or, or sometimes functions as a priest, and certainly uh, Wiccan witches, you know, we are in that position, you know, because... Uh, that's what we're really trying to do and trying to be, you know, to uh, to be those people who can conduct rituals like that, uh, people who will perform uh, rites of passage for other people in the community if asked, uh, people who, you know, should be, uh, you know, worthy of being consulted when it comes to magical and spiritual matters. You know, when we fail, I mean, we fail and it's not a good thing. So uh, it really does behoove anyone who uh, whoever functions in the role of the priest to uh, to keep be mindful uh, how they present themselves, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and making sure that they are actively seeking to correct or at least minimize their faults because it can do a lot of damage. And then um, with the seemliness of a daughter, um, the trouble with young people is that their sense of propriety is oftentimes quite lacking. And now we live in an age where uh, their parents and even their grandparents uh, don't have much sense of propriety. And people say, oh, there's really no such thing. Just do whatever you want. It's all fine. Well, how has that been working out for people? You know, sometimes the uh, issue with in a society isn't the fact that a standard exists or that a standard is enforced. Uh, sometimes it is holding back uh, worse issues than anything that might come up from people having common standards. So I think that's something worth thinking about because I think we've gone as far as we can go with the abandonment of etiquette. And I think uh, I am not the only person who has really noticed uh, how destructive that has been to civil society. So uh, as we are moving forward, as we are thinking about how to create a more pagan world, we might also think about uh, what what are suitable standards of conduct? What is suitable kinds of etiquette? What should we really expect of ourselves and of other people in our community? Because if if we don't sort this out, I don't think we should trust that something that every, that people agree upon just appears. And I don't think we should count on surviving and enduring as, as a people or as a religion if we don't have standards, because why would it? That which cannot be defined does not exist for long. Now, today's magical intention is harmony. Uh, the color is ivory. The plant is chamomile, the animals, the dove, and the crystal is selenite. Uh, so how often do you truly feel in harmony with your surroundings? And I know that the easy answer is, well, of course I'm in harmony. I feel connected and all this other things. Uh, that's all well and good. But the question is, what about harmony? Are you flowing in cooperation with everything? Do you feel yourself caught up in this magical flow? Are you going in the same uh, productive direction as everything else? Or are you in conflict with it? Uh, are there issues that really need to be resolved? Is there something going on that is really unhealthy that you need to impose your will over? Uh, you just look look at this question a little bit more deeply is what I would encourage you to do. And whatever the answer to the question is, follow through. Now for today's pagan practice, it's Monday, so we honor Luna. And uh, this would also be an outstanding day to put some magical protection on your mirror. Uh, never forget that any reflective surface, uh, especially mirrors, they are portals of energy. Uh, this could also include uh, your television, uh, your computer, laptop, uh, tablet, cell phone, anything that's shiny and reflective. It can be a portal of energy. It can also be used for scrying if you want to. Uh, so putting some protection on it is a very prudent thing to do, uh, particularly for those who practice the craft. And I did uh, bring up this little this little chart for ways to protect your mirrors. Um, drawing a pentacle protection sigil or a rune, uh, smoke cleansing with herbs and incense, moon or sun's cleansing. Uh, be careful with the sun cleansing. You don't want to turn a mirror out and set something on fire. Very difficult, hard to explain to the neighbors. Don't want to deal with that. Uh, spraying it down with salt water. Obviously you don't want to damage the frame of the mirror. So be careful with that and oils. And again, just be careful with what substance you're using so it's not doing damage to the mirror itself. Uh, but take steps, uh, make sure that you're not leaving you know, this particular door unlocked, especially if you, your household is prone to uh, energetic activity that perhaps isn't necessarily friendly. Uh, when you're closing off those doors, when you're getting that energy out, remember to protect your mirrors. Uh, lastly for today, try to have an early night and meditate. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 
I'm feeling a bit drained since the solstice. Everything's just kind of feeling a lot more low key. It might be the heat. Now, last of all for today, the journal prompt. Uh, are your dreams more or less vivid in summer? And also, uh, what are your sleeping patterns like now that the weather is getting warm? I mean, even if you're in a, you know, in air conditioning and, you know, you're never exposed more to the heat than what you are choosing to be at any given time. I, I am personally finding that uh, the hotter it is outside, even if it's perfectly comfortable inside, I don't sleep as well. I don't sleep as easily. And my dreams are tend to be a lot more disjointed. So I'm curious about uh, experiences that other people are having. Is it like this for you or do you sleep better? Just uh, what's going on with you? And um and of course, the journal part is for you, but I would be interested in people's experiences. You know, is this a, is this a season where uh, you are feeling charged uh, the way that you should, or are you feeling drained? It would just, I'd be very curious to see that. And if there's any correlations between this and uh, maybe our astrological zodiac signs or, you know, or, or whatever else. It would just, it would be interesting to see if there are any kind of patterns. Uh, but that does it for today. Uh, let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And of course, uh, come back tomorrow for the next edition. And I'll see you guys then. Bye for now.